Hi, welcome to Vineyard Spotlight. I'm Jen O'Hanlon of the O'Hanlon Group. In this week's episode, I'll be speaking with Kim Angel and Arielle Faria of the Coalition to Create the MV Housing Bank. Hello, ladies. Thanks for joining me. So um, if you could just one at a time introduce yourselves and um, let our audience know how you became involved in the housing bank, and then we can kind of go from there to talk about a little history of the housing bank and what's going on with the housing crisis on Martha's Vineyard. Sure. Um, my name is Kimberly Angel. I have been a resident, full-time resident of Martha's Vineyard since 1983. I owned a business in Vineyard Haven, uh, Vineyard Tax Matters, and uh, I got involved in housing um, around 2005 after I had been here almost 20 years and it was already apparent that there were major housing issues with the shuffling, um, the summer rentals coming and, and needing to find um, winter rentals. And so at that point I got involved with um, Island Affordable Housing Fund and have remained involved since. Great. Well, I moved to Martha's Vineyard year-round 13 years ago. Um, I've been summering here since I can remember. Um, and I moved here with my family. Um, and I got involved with housing here when I became the manager um, for the Affordable Housing Committee and Trust in Eggertown. Um, I did that for six years, and now I work for Island Housing Trust. And um, I got involved with the coalition a couple years back um, because uh, a group of us were gathered um, that were interested in, you know, housing issues on the island. And um, you know, there was a request made for people to participate, um, and I am the co-chair with Julie Fay. And you know we continue to work together as a team. Great. So, just to give anyone who <laughs> hasn't been paying attention to uh, the island's housing uh, crisis, um, I mean, I know I've been here for 25 years, and I it's been ongoing. But of course, through the pandemic, it has gotten worse. Um, is there anything you can kind of to educate anybody who may not really have been paying attention? Um, about the crisis and, and, you know, the issues that people are having with being short-staffed and all of that? Well, I can certainly speak from a business owner's point of view how difficult it was even before I sold my business in 2019. And it's only been exacerbated by the pandemic. And all you have to do is go to dinner, go to the grocery store, try and get a primary care physician. Um, and you can see that, um, Businesses are understaffed, municipalities are understaffed, and the major contributor is lack of housing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, housing is, you know, an infrastructure issue. If you don't have stable housing, you don't have a community. It doesn't function properly. So all of the positions that she referred to are empty because you just can't afford to be here. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a problem. It's a, it's a health issue. Um, if you don't have firefighters, if you don't have nurses, if you don't have teachers, where are you? Um, you're not a community anymore, and we can't function this way. I agree. It almost just, things just fall apart. Yeah. yeah. So um, if this housing bank is formed, what, uh, what would it offer? Is it just you know, uh, paying for people's housing, or would it actually buy um, houses, or how, it, where would the funds go? It's a combination um, of different um, programming. So you could have down payment assistance, you can have rental assistance. Um, you can also uh, fund denitrification um, systems and, and help with wastewater issues. Um, you, the money could also be used to buy back short-term rentals and convert those into year-round affordable housing. 
Um, it could also, Ariel touched on shared equity appreciation loans, which means that because the gap between the price of a house and what somebody can afford on a mortgage um, is so big, the housing bank could bridge that gap with a loan that would be repaid upon sale of the house along with a portion of the equity that someone realizes on that house. Um, another program I want to mention that we've considered and hope will happen is um, buying deed restrictions so that, let's say right now you rent your house um, because you just can't afford the mortgage, um, the housing bank could give you money up front to not rent your house, that would bridge your gap, and you in, in turn would offer or agree to a permanent deed restriction on your house so that only um, it could only be used for year-round housing. Not necessarily affordable, but just that anybody who lives there has to be a year-round permanent resident of Martha's Vineyard. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's great, and I think it's not just one solution. It's right. multi-point. Multi yes, yeah. creative solutions. Um, I think that's wonderful. What are some misconceptions that people may have about the housing um, bank? And I know okay. that it's a, a I guess, tell, tell us a little bit more about how it would, where the money would come from. I know it's the buyer of real estate who would pay a percentage. That's right. So the fee would be on an unknown, at this point, buyer of a house. We, when we wrote the Warren article that everybody saw on town meeting floor, the exemption amount was a million dollars. That means that no fee would be on any property that was sold under a million. Um, that's probably going to go up because median home sale prices are much higher now, three years later. Um, so it's a 2% fee on the amount over the exemption. So for instance, if the um, exemption amount is 1.5 million, you're only gonna pay that 2% on any sale price over, or purchase price, over 1.5 million. Um, the other, I think the other misconception is that we're proposing to build our way out of this, and that is just not true. 75% of the funding has to go to already developed property. It cannot go to new construction. Only 25% can. Okay. Um, are there other, um, I think I was uh, learning about this myself and somebody mentioned Stowe, Vermont had a similar type of program and, and then there's also other um, towns and areas in Massachusetts that are looking to do something similar. Can you talk about how it may be working elsewhere? Um, in, I mean, even across the country, I think there are other. Yeah, LA just um, passed a transfer fee, which is actually 5%. Wow. Um, and that is for, you know, uh, man, it's a mansion tax, as they call it. Um, and it's because they have the same issues. Mm -hmm. um, and they're trying to, you know, continue to have a workforce and, um, you know, make it attainable for people to have housing and not just, you know, have people that can afford $3 million homes. Mm -hmm. um, but locally, um, there are a lot of towns, um, Cambridge um, and Boston, Boston yeah. Salem. Mm -hmm. um, there are at least a dozen towns that are also trying to implement a transfer fee. But the the transfer fee has to be passed statewide, and then the specific towns or cities that want to opt in to use that vehicle to raise money for housing um, would do so on their own. So it's a statewide effort, not just a vineyard or a Nantucket mm -hmm. effort. I'd also like to mention that Tucker Holland, who is uh, Nantucket's housing person, uh, said something really uh, intuitive, which is that we, the vineyard, have a crystal ball 
into our future, and it's called Nantucket. And right now, Nantucket's median home sale price is over three million, oh, and wow. ours is one point no five. Mm -hmm. So that's where we're heading if we do nothing. Okay, so I know we were talking about a few misconceptions, and um, one I know originally when when the idea of the housing bank came up, some people were saying, okay, well. We're already having 2%, um, buyers are already paying 2% for the land bank, and they seem to have a lot of land. And um, would it make sense that it was, you know, 1% maybe for the land bank and 1% for a housing bank? And can you... To divert yeah. the money from the land bank. Um, we don't agree with that at all. Um, first of all, and I'm not speaking for the land bank, but um, they have debt service. And it's my understanding that a good deal of those funds go to service the debt they already have for the properties they've already purchased. Um, and secondly, we don't want to pit conservation against housing. One of the reasons we love it here is because we can go walk on those land bank paths um, anytime we want. They're well kept. They're um, they're available to anybody, and um, and it's part of what we love about living mm -hmm. here. And I think there's legislature involved too. You couldn't change um, the two percent, right? Is is that's right. part of their? That's true. You would have to go back to the state house right. to change that. Um, and we can tell you, it, you know, <laughs> it, it is very difficult for us. It's, it's very difficult both process. ways. <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. So um, you just mentioned the debt service that the land bank does have. Would the housing bank also take loans out to purchase property or something like That's, that? Yes, um, we can borrow, but we're capped. Our borrowing will be capped. And that was actually written in, uh, in response to one of the towns. So. You know, when we talk about um, misconceptions and pushback, um, I think we've held m several open coalition meetings, completely open to the public and the press, and um, we've listened and uh, acclimated, accommodated the legislation um, to, uh, uh, tailored it to um, meet the pushback that we've heard. Uh, so we didn't always have a uh, cap on the bonding. Mm -hmm. we, we changed that in response to one of the select boards. We uh, had a lot of community participation and we heard what everyone had to say and you know we changed accordingly. This mm -hmm. is a community effort. We have to have everyone involved and that means you know um, the dip various town entities and um, you know, conservation uh, and, and just your everyday community mm -hmm. member. I would still, um, I would invite still, because it's not a done deal, anyone who, um, who wants to participate or give feedback to still show up mm -hmm. at a meeting and do so, even mm -hmm. if you don't agree with us 100%. Come be part of the process. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking of the process, Ariel, I know that uh, you all just had a big rally in Boston last week, and you were not only there, You can you speak about um, that? Well, it was an amazing day, I will tell you. Um, we, the steering committee for the coalition um, worked very hard um, to make it happen, and we got over 200 people from the vineyard to go over on the boat, take buses, go to the state house and advocate for um, the transfer fee. Um, when we got there, uh, we met with different legislators. Um, we broke out into groups and, and we spoke with them and you know, told them about our issues and, and how we think that the um, local option transfer fee can help. Um, and they listened. I mean, there were legislators writing down notes and asking us more questions and interacting. And there was such a diverse group of people that showed up. I mean, young, old, everything in between. Um, business you know, owners probably business and employees. And, yeah. and, and that's a really good point because mm -hmm. some businesses even pay their employees for a day's work 
to join us and come up. That's to, great. To Boston. Yeah, yeah. and so um, then after we spoke to the legislators, we had a rally out th in the front of the State House, and um, we had multiple people speak. Um, first of all, um, Senator Julian Sear spoke, um, Representative Dylan Fernandez spoke, um, we had Tucker Holland, um, the director of housing in, in Nantucket, um, speak, um, along with Julie Vanderhoop um, from the Wampanoag tribe. Um, Grayson, Grayson. Uh, a charter school student. She um, ended it, and it was an amazing speech. Um, oh, no, I wish I was there. Everyone, <laughs> everyone yeah. was, one was engaged, and, you know, it was um, an amazing sight to see everyone supporting, you know, this legislation. And both islands. Mm -hmm. Nantucket was represented as well as the vineyard. It was a two-island effort. It, it, it was just fabulous. Yeah, we had about 60 um, folks from Nantucket join us also. Great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, where do things stand now as far as next steps and, um, you know, how, how are things proceeding now? So it's, you know, at the State House, um, and, um, you know, the discussion is happening. There are several that. different bills trying to achieve the same um, outcome, um, but, you know, they have to kind of read it all, gather it together, and see what makes the most sense um, so that everyone can have what they need. Um, and uh, they will be holding... Um, they're going to go into session and people will testify and we'll have some representatives. Some um, hearings. Mm -hmm. Okay. We hope to be represented there. Any schedule yes. for that? Is it like in the next few months? We don't know. Not yet. I yep. mean, okay. it, we're hoping it, it, yeah. sooner rather than later, but yeah. it is a little bit up in the air right now. But people can still participate. They can write letters to their legislators. Um, they can uh, engage their local um uh, municipalities and, and, and make sure that, you know, they know, our, our representatives know what we need and um, can help support that okay. legislation. And if people want to get in touch with somebody from the organization, they can maybe visit the website. Is that? ccmvhb.org. We have um, a copy of the Warren article. We've got a link to the media from Boston, we've got um, common misconceptions answered on there. Uh, we've got a lot of information. And there's also a, um, if you want to just sign up and stay informed, you oh, can great. enter your email. Okay. Or just participate <clears throat> with the coalition, please. I mean, we, we do a lot of work and we need as many people to help out where, you know, a group of volunteers. We have one paid uh, administrator. Noah Lipnick, and he's great, but the rest of it gets done through us. And As I know, because getting you both on here wasn't <laughs> easy, <laughs> and because you're working around your regular schedule. So Kim and Ariel, thank you so much for being here with me today. I think that was really helpful for the community, and uh, thank you all for joining us today on the Vineyard Spotlight.